Gunting Chairman Tan Sri Lim Kok Tay is buying Gunting Hong Kong's stake in Singapore-listed luxury yacht builder Grand Banks Yachts for 62.58 million Hong Kong dollars cash or 33.3 million ringgit. The cruise and resort operator, which earlier this month flagged a net loss of no less than 1.5 billion US dollars for FY20, has been badly hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. It said in a filing to the Hong Kong Stock Exchange that the disposal will enable it to offload non-core assets and investments and provide the required liquidity. Lim purchased the 26.8% stake from EXA, a subsidiary of Gunting Hong Kong, which is in the business of submersibles, luxury yachts and shipyards. The exercise is expected to take place within three days from the agreement inked yesterday or a later date as mutually agreed by the buyer and the seller. At the close, Gunting's shares fell 0.6%, ending the day at 5 ringgit 16 for a market value of 19.75 billion ringgit. Gamuda's 60% owned SRS consortium will undertake the development of Island A, one of the three planned man made islands under the Penang Transportation Master Plan. In a filing with Bursa Malaysia, Gamuda said the Penang state government has accepted the terms of project development of the said island. It will be implemented via a project development model through a joint venture with the state administration. The project cost will be fully funded by the company through internally generated funds and bank borrowings. According to Gamuda, a project developer company will be formed on a joint venture basis between the entity nominated by the Penang State Government and a special purpose vehicle to be set up by SRS on the basis of 3070 respectively. The works will be awarded to a turnkey contractor in which the state government nominee and another special purpose vehicle to be set up by SRS would have 30% and 70% stakes respectively. The turnkey contractor will be awarded the works via a turnkey contract from the project developer. When contacted, Gamuda Deputy MD Mohammad Rushdan said the first phase of the reclamation works for Island A is expected to bring the group some 5 billion ringgit worth of work orders over a 5 to 6 year period. The job is seen contributing positively to the group's future earnings. Trading of Gamuda shares was suspended today. Yesterday, the stock closed down 1.33% or 5 cent at 3 ringgit 70 valuing it at 9.3 billion ringgit. Property developer Eco World Development Group says first quarter FY21 net profit jumped 71% to 62.43 million ringgit. This was mainly due to a 60% increase in the group's share of results from joint ventures, in line with the substantially higher profits recorded by Eco World International. However, revenue shrank by 5.7% to 507.35 million ringgit on lower levels of site activity at its matured projects. Sales more than doubled year on year to 706 million ringgit, and to date the figure has risen to 911 million. EcoWorld President and CEO Datuk Changki Moa says the group is tremendously encouraged by the strong sales numbers, considering the imposition of MCO 2.0 as well as a third national lockdown imposed in the UK since December 2020. The sales numbers also came amid the typically slower months due to the year-end holidays and Chinese New Year festivities. EcoWorld International had posted a more than tenfold jump in first quarter earnings to 56.03 million ringgit on the back of profit recognition of its Melbourne project. Top line swelled to 303.28 million ringgit from 51,000. Sales totaled 312 million ringgit during the quarter and 408 million ringgit year to date. It also declared an interim dividend of 1 cent, its maiden dividend since its listing in 2017. EcoWorld Chairman Tan Sri Liu Kisen noted that both EcoWorld and EcoWorld International are well on track to achieve the combined 5 billion ringgit sales target set for FY 2021. He said EcoWorld International's focus will be on rewarding its shareholders with dividend payments now that a substantial portion of its early projects have been completed. Similarly, EcoWorld's strong sales performance and improving balance sheet should enable it to improve on its dividend payment capabilities in FY 2021.
TA Enterprise will be taken off the main market of Bursa Malaysia next Tuesday, three decades after being a listed entity. This follows the privatisation of the company by its major shareholder, stockbroking tycoon Dato Tony Tia. In a bourse filing, the company that made its bursa debut in 1990 said its entire issued share capital will be removed from the local stock exchange at 9am that day. Trading of the firm's shares was suspended on March 15th. On December 15th last year, Tia announced that he will acquire all remaining shares in TA Enterprise at an offer price of 65.5 cents. The takeover by Tia, who held a 77.7% stake when he made the offer, was extended to March 5th after the lapse of the initial January 25th deadline. DWA Advisory, the independent advisor for the offer, said the unconditional mandatory takeover offer by the major shareholder was not fair but reasonable. This is because the offer price was higher than the company's prevailing price in the stock market and presented the others with a chance to exit the illiquid counter. It recommended shareholders to accept the offer. At the expiry of the offer on March 5th, they are controlled a 94.42% stake in the company. The Kuala Lumpur High Court has allowed Putrajaya to forfeit and seize approximately 49 million ringgit in cash assets belonging to Tan Sri Larry Lo Hock Beng, father of missing businessman Lo Tik Jo or Jo Lo. Justice Muhammad Zaini Mazlan allowed the forfeiture after the prosecution informed him that no third parties had come forward to claim the money after a federal government gazette published by the Attorney General's Chambers was made public on March 11th. Justice Zaini then allowed the government to seize the funds in various bank accounts under Lowe's name. Lo, along with his wife, Puan Sri Goh Gekwi, left Malaysia since the change of government in May 2018. It is understood that the cash is distributed across seven different bank accounts, which include the KLCC RHB branch in Kuala Lumpur and the Maybank Plaza MWE branch in Penang. It was reported that the elder law had kept the funds in the current and fixed deposit accounts, which are now subject to the forfeiture proceedings since his son was implicated in the 1MDB scandal. A source told the Edgemarkets.com on condition of anonymity last year that the monies are believed to have been transferred from foreign companies by Joe Lowe.